Shays Rebellion, Alashma. These days you hear plenty of people citing this policy or that law as being constitutional or unconstitutional. Rarely do you hear anyone getting in a tizzy because something doesn't align with the Articles of Confederation. You call this an Article of Confederation? So, what happened in between the penning of our Constitution's predecessor and the ratification of the BFD? Big fancy document that we know and love today. Well, first of all, we can't expect our Founding Fathers to have gotten it all right on the first try. All right, drafting of the Constitution, take two. They did their best, but uh, there were not surprisingly some kinks that would have to be worked out. In the mid to late 1700s, those kinks were worked out in the form of a military confrontation. There wasn't a lot of uh, write your congressman back in those days. Eh, screw it. I'm getting my gun. Many Americans felt like the articles made our central government a little too weak. <coughs> it wasn't allowed to levy taxes. Yoink. And it had trouble mobilizing its military. <coughs> The taxes part was a big sticking point with a lot of people, especially Revolutionary War veterans who were looking to collect a few bucks for their service, thank you very much. Need any redcoats out of the picture? One veteran in particular, Daniel Shays, was a farmer who was pretty PO'd about the situation. The problem was, none of the farmers had any cash. They practiced subsistence farming, and they couldn't exactly pay their taxes in potatoes. As people sold off their possessions to pay the taxes, they ended up losing everything, even their land. But the government was still able to print money, and it printed tons of it to finance its expenses. Get it? Because we burned through money? Eh, never mind. So because the printed money had no financial backing, we were facing financial ruin for both the central government as well as the Massachusetts state government. There were also British moneylenders who were banging down doors to collect loans from American clients. I was just kidding about the whole Redcoats thing. All in all, it was an icky situation. So, with many working class citizens facing bankruptcy and peeved out of their gourds, <laughs> Daniel assembled 5,000 or so farmers and merchants who rebelled against the Massachusetts government. Our central government didn't whip out the big guns leaving Daniel and his merry men to grapple with state militia. Why wasn't the government allowed to send in serious military forces? Because it was forbidden. By the Articles of Confederation, of course. Three cheers for irony. Hip hip, hip hooray! At the end of the day, Shays' Rebellion proved that there was a need for a different constitution that gave the central government some power to actually do stuff. Oh yeah! Like collect taxes, use its military when it needed to, regulate interstate commerce, and generally keep the states in line. Especially South Carolina. You have to keep that one on a short leash. Hip hip hooray!